everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do more Prismacolor combinations and I'm going to share some more of my favorite highlight colors from the 150 Prismacolor set. So if you would like to do this along with me, get out your Spring Hill paper if you have some and you could just draw a few little rectangles on your paper too, just like I did. Or you don't even need the rectangles, you can just put your colors down on the paper, but I'm going to show you some different blending techniques and a few little tips and tricks I've got in my head for one of the uh, combinations I'm going to share with you along with my favorite highlight colors. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a really cool color combination for leaves that is very different. <laughs> And I don't think I've ever showed it before in any of my videos. If you want to see all these color combinations, go ahead and stick around. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please do also subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. If you check the description down below, you will find a link to my Facebook group. We have a wonderful community over there and I would love for you to join us. You will also find a link if you would like to sign up to my email list. If you sign up for my email list, you will get a free color swatching chart back in your email so that you could swatch all your beautiful colored pencil sets. And I'm also on Patreon if you would like to support me over there. Let's go ahead and get into this video so I could share these amazing color combinations with all of you. This is going to be a fun video because we're not just going to share some color combinations, but we are going to do a few different things with these color combinations. And then, like I said at the end, I'm going to show you a really cool leaf combination. And I don't know, maybe in the next video I will... I, I'm planning on doing a video where I do just leaf com combinations because so many of us find ourselves in coloring books coloring leaves all of the time. And I've got so many different beautiful leaf combinations and everybody just thinks, okay, well green is the only color for leaves and that's really not true. I previously did a video where I showed you how to color leaves and I've used all kinds of other different colors including pinks and different things in leaves. I've colored fall leaves and green leaves and just so many different combinations. But in this video I'm going to show you a little different one from what I have showed you previously. But the first combination I want to share with you is going to be pinks and purples. And those of you that are coloring Valentine's Day pages right now and looking at a lot of pinks, purples, reds, and things like that, this is probably a good combination for some of your pages like that. I was going to do a video where I did just Valentine's Day combinations, but I think it's a little bit too late to do that considering this is my video that's going to go up on Sunday, which we've only got a few days before Valentine's Day, so it really didn't fit. But the colors I have here are mulberry, as you can tell. They're some of my favorite colors because they are pretty short. <laughs> but I've got mulberry for my shadowing color, and then I've got lavender, and I have my deco pink. And deco pink is one of my absolute favorite highlight colors. If you've watched my previous videos where I color flowers and things like that, I use a lot of this for flowers and it looks absolutely gorgeous when I bring in my stickles. You guys know how much I love my glitter. So let's go ahead and we are going to, I think I probably made these boxes a little bit too big this time, but we're going to work with it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and lay down the mulberry. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to do more of the mulberry at the bottom. And then we are going to come in and we are going to lay down our lavender and we're going to kind of pull this down from the mulberry so that the two colors kind of blend together and intermix. And like I showed you in my last video, when you all do that, you're kind of creating another color too, where the two colors kind of intermix and come together. Now it's always up to you when you blend your colors together, how much you want this blending line to be there or to appear, and how much you want to be able to change the colors, and how often you want to, or how much you want to come back and actually bring this lavender all the way over the mulberry. You can also do that 
and completely change this color once these two colors intermix with one another. So in this one, I'm just gonna go over the blending line with the two colors. And then I'm gonna come in with my Deco Pink, which is my absolute favorite, favorite highlight color. And I'm just gonna go over the center. And then of course you always need to come back and make sure that they are blended together nicely. So I'm gonna come back with my other colors and I'm just gonna kind of pull these through. And as you can see, I'm pulling that lavender a little bit into that deco pink. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the same thing with the deco pink. Now, when I am coloring an actual object on a coloring page, I always like to come down here on the sides. Imagine that this was an object on the coloring page. I like to actually come down on the sides like this, and that is what creates more depth. Like say I was doing a flower petal. If you come down on the sides like this, you're actually creating more depth and giving it the illusion that it's actually popping off of the page. And then when you come back with your highlight color, you just kind of blend that out. And a great thing to do is kind of come back in another motion, like a circular motion like this. And you can come back and it helps to blend all these colors together even better. Now I'm gonna come back with my darkest color, my mulberry. And like I showed you just a second ago, I'm going to use more of a circular motion. You can also turn the page if you wanted to like this and go back this direction and it helps to even cover even more white of that paper and bring it down even more. And as I'm coming down further, I'm kind of releasing the pressure that I have on the pencil so that it blends even better together. And then I'm gonna come back with my lavender and again, I'm going in a circular motion and I still have the paper turned sideways and I'm bringing all of these together. Now it's up to you when you're coloring and you're doing your blending how much of the white of the paper you want to disappear. You can completely burnish out and get rid of all of the white of the paper or you can leave some of the white in the, of the paper there so that you can so that your object or whatever it is you're coloring still looks as though it has some texture to it. So it all depends on what the object is that you're coloring on the paper, whether it is a flower or a leaf or an animal or a house. If you were coloring like a house, of course, I probably wouldn't use, well, I guess I would, I did use these colors for a house. <laughs> but if you were doing a uh, house and you wanted it to look like it was actual wood, then you would probably leave some of the white without burnishing it all the way through. Now look here what this is doing, like here where I'm right on the blending line and kind of bringing these together and it's actually, if you go back and forth and you do that over the top and you just go back and forth and do that, you're actually changing the color and you could see the difference from down here to up here, how it is actually changing the color and it's burnishing out even more as I apply more pressure. And if I go all the way over here, over the mulberry with my lavender, I'm actually creating a whole different look. And I'm using harder pressure than I did up here at the top. But do you see how it changes and completely changes the look of the way your pencils look? And then I'm gonna come back in here and try to kind of pull this through and again, go in a circular motion with the deco pink. I absolutely love this deco pink for a highlight color. And if you can see here, like you could do with any of your Prismacolors, you can actually change the value of the color 
as to whether or not you apply very hard pressure or medium pressure or light pressure. If I wanted to leave this highlight right here in the center, I could do that and I could just use the harder pressure and then come in with a medium pressure and then a very light pressure as I come towards the center. There is one color combination that is absolutely beautiful. This would be beautiful on any of your Valentine's Day pages that you want to add purples or pinks or reds or anything like that. So that's a really great um, color to use on those pages that you may be coloring now. Now we're going to come back and we are going to change this one up just a little bit and I'm going to show you a really cool technique that you can use. I'm still going to use these two colors. I am actually going to put my highlight color to the side and I'm going to show you how you can make a color that was originally your mid-tone and turn that into your highlight color. Now let's go ahead and lay down the mulberry. So I've got a little bit of the mulberry and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do more of the mulberry. And I'm, I'm using very light pressure when I do this and I'm just kind of going over it in the layers. And then I'm going to come back with my lavender. Now watch what I do when I lay down this lavender because this is a really cool what would you call it if you guys have seen my series where I'm showing you tips and tricks and hacks and different things to do with colored pencils. This is a really cool thing that would be kind of a quote unquote hack that you could do and use a color that would that is not necessarily a like pop of color or a highlight color and you can actually turn it into a highlight color. So when I start up here and I kind of pull this color down, I'm going to blend this in to this color to the uh, the mulberry and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker right here and do kind of um, you know a few layers but now I'm gonna come down a little bit further and I'm going to really lighten it up I'm going really super light with this color and do you see now how I have two different colors from one pencil I'm going to do the same thing on this side where I kind of pull it through with the mulberry. And then I'm going to come back with very light pressure, barely touching the paper, but the tooth of the paper is actually picking up that color and catching it. And then I'm going to go much, much lighter and I'm going to create a third color. And look at that. Do you see how I have a harder pressure here with the same color? And then I have a medium pressure here where I still kind of really barely touch the paper with the same color. And then here I really barely, barely touched it. I just kind of laid the pencil over the paper just enough so that tooth can pick it up. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in my white prisma color and I'm going to make sure that I don't have a really sharp sharp tip if you could look at this it is a little bit dull and what I'm going to do with this is I am going to use the burnishing technique and I am going to just make all of these colors one so I'm going to go in a circular motion and I'm just going to go over these colors and as you can see, I have still left a lot of the white of the paper. And it is just creating a whole different look. Now see when I come over with the white, like if you look over here, this mulberry compared to this mulberry, when I did the mulberry over here, I only laid down a couple of layers. But now I'm going over it with the white and bringing it all together and with the white over it it's kind of creating a whole nother color and it's just lightened it up a whole lot and if I just continue to keep going over this 
it's just going to bring all of these colors together and I've just actually created another color combination and I have only used two of the colors and then added white so that is really really a really cool technique and if I wanted to I could always come back in here so take a look at this now and remember what that looks like and actually maybe I'll do it up here and I won't do it down here this way you guys can see the differences but if I wanted to come back in with the mulberry over that white and I just wanted to line the top here and add a little bit more of this darker color adding a little bit more pressure I'm actually using the same pencil and I'm creating a whole different color and with these combinations I'm actually thinking I should probably should have put this in my um, tips and tricks and hacks series because this is totally a tip trick or hack because look at the difference here do you see the difference in those two and I pretty much used the same colors the same pencils you look at your 150 set and you you think that you just have 150 colors you don't actually have 150 colors there are so many more colors that can be created from that 150 set even if you're somebody who could only afford a small set of Prismacolors there are so many colors you can get out of even a 36 set my 36 set did me really good for three years before I was ever able to even afford to get myself the 150 set of pencils. I was coloring with those for the longest time and you can create so much just with those colors. Now we are going to move on to, we're gonna go away from the reds and the pinks and we're gonna move into greens. So let me see what I have here for greens. We are gonna do a lighter combination a lighter green combination first that is really really pretty and we're gonna do some of the same things and some of the little tips and tricks and hacks and everything that I showed you over here and we are going to do it with this color as well or with this color combination so the colors I'm gonna use for this combination are sap green light gray green light and pale sage and I kind of have two colors here that are colors that I use for highlights very, very often. And so I'm sort of using two different highlight colors in one color combination. And when you are creating, you don't always have to have very dark, dark colors if you don't want to, because like I just showed you previously, you can make so many more colors out of just one Prismacolor. If I wanted to lay down, like say this magenta, or mul excuse me, mulberry, and I wanted to create a complete color combination using just this and the white, I can totally do that. So let's go ahead and try some color combinations with these colors. So I've got my sap green light and this is gonna be my darkest color. And so I'm just going to lay some of this down. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here on this side. Then I have my Pale Sage, and I'm going to pull that through just a little bit from the previous color. And then I am going to come back with this gray green light. And do you know what else would look really beautiful with this combination is probably cream fit in here somewhere. That is one of my other absolute favorite colors and we're going to get into a cream color combination in a minute. And I'm going to show you how that would work. But look how pretty this color is, this gray green light. Look how that just kind of pops off the page. Let's go ahead and add more color here. So this is my darkest color. Let's go ahead and turn the page a little bit so we can kind of fill in some of that white with this darker color. 
Now these are more muted colors, but that gray green light is going to kind of make this more muted color pop off the page a little bit. And then I'm going to come in in my circular motion and I'm going to add some more of this. What was this? Pale Sage? Yeah. This is a beautiful color. And this one is kind of muted, but it's still kind of bright at the same time. Let me go ahead and do the same thing down here in the bottom. Using a little bit harder pressure and a circular motion and bringing those through as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my pale sage, kind of sideways in a circular motion, kind of getting rid of some of that white of the paper and pulling it into that gray-green. What was that gray-green light it's called? Yes. So then let's come back and just kind of pull that through. And as I bring my highlight color through, I'm going to go over this mid-tone and I'm going to kind of bring it down. But when I do that, just like previously, I am going to pull the pressure up on my hand just a little bit so that I could leave kind of a light, even lighter area here. And so do you see how I kind of got two different colors out of this very, very light color? And even if I wanted to, I could come back with my white color and I can even go over this and make that even lighter. Look how pretty that combination is. Let's try a little test up here on the top of this combination. And we're going to go over this one more time with much harder pressure so we could see how the color changes. It's going to it's going to cover more of the white of the paper. But what I want to do is I now want to take my pale sage and I want to actually go over this and see if it changes our color at all. Look how pretty. So it did. It kind of lightened it up and it just blended the two colors together. And then I'm pulling them all the way down towards the center. And so this is actually burnishing it out, pulling all the colors together, blending two colors together at the same time, creating a completely different color here than what we would see down here. But there is so much that you could do with these pencils. And it's all about just experimenting. Now if I wanted to come down here and add more gray-green light and really burnish these out and blend them together, I can do that. I could even come all the way up here and lighten this up even more and bring all the colors together. Now if you look at the top here now, even though I didn't use my white and I just put the white kind of in the center and blended it out a little bit, I actually burnished all of this out. So you can see the difference here now in what it looks like all burnished together where I blended together the two colors and it just has a very seamless looking blend all the way through here. But down here is just a completely different technique where you've still left some of the white of the paper and so it looks like it has a little bit of texture and really cool here if I came over here and I sharpened my pencil I'm going to grab my Doll 133 here, you guys know this is my absolute favorite pencil sharpener. If you guys don't already have one of these, I don't know what you're doing with your lives. <laughs> this pencil sharpener is an absolute life changer when it comes to your Prismacolor pencils. I will, I will always, I will always, always, always have that Doll 133 linked down in the description box below. But if I wanted to come in here and still leave all of this texture here and just come in and add more depth to this, I would just make sure that my pencil was much more sharpened. And then I could come in here and I could just do this. 
and look at the difference that it makes and how it just gives it that look where it is just kind of popping off the page. And so now you can see that this one down here, it still has the texture. It looks as though it is kind of coming up from the page because I have kind of added the, this um, very faint border around here and that is what gives it the look of that pop that is just kind of where it's just kind of pulling up off the page and I use this a lot of times when I'm coloring flowers when I want to make them when I want to give them that effect or that look where they're just kind of being pulled up off the page and give them that extra dimension but that is a completely different technique. If you want something to look a little bit more flat but still have a little bit of dimension, you would use this technique more so and you still have your, your um, shadow color and your mid-tone and your highlight color and they're just very, very blended out. But here we still have some texture and then we still are making it look like it is popping off the page. If I was coloring something like a house, then this is probably the method that I would use because I would want to make sure that it was kind of looking or popping off the page and then it still had texture where I was leaving a little bit of the white of the paper but I still want it to have some highlight in certain areas where the light or the natural light would be hitting the object. Let's go ahead and move on to our next color combination and we'll talk about some more tips and tricks and different things that you can do when you're blending your colors. I think I'm actually going to put this video in with that series because there's a lot of really good tips here in this video that really can be used and applied to your coloring pages that will completely change the way that you color. So these are a lot of really great tips that are gonna that are gonna help you to improve your coloring skills if you just continue to keep practicing them. And you can practice them just on a sheet of paper like this, or you can get out a coloring page and you could apply them to a coloring page. So in this color combination, I am getting my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite. Like I've gone through so many of these. This is my absolute favorite highlight color. I use it for so many different combinations and I wanted to save it for this video because I wanted to save the best for last. This is the most amazing color in your Prismacolor set. You can use this color with pretty much any color in your Prismacolor set and it will work. So here I've got the sap green light and so I'm coming down with the sap green light again And I'm going to do it here on the bottom. Just a couple layers. And now I'm coming back with my Pale Sage. And we're going to add a couple layers of this. And I'm kind of lightening up on the pressure of my hand to pull this down just a little bit more, just like I did previously. Now I'm going to come back with my cream and look at this. This color, no matter what you use it on <laughs> or what color combination you use it on, this color is truly amazing. Like I use it for hair, I use it for flowers, I use it for so many different things. I use it for leaves. I seriously just need like a like 12 of these like a whole box of 12 of those just sitting in my stash because it is one of the absolute best highlight colors okay so I'm just adding another layer of this one that was my darkest what was that one the uh, sap green light now we're coming back in with the pale sage again and we're just pulling this into our cream color. And then I am coming in here with my 
cream again. And if you can see again, I am leaving a little bit of the white of the paper right here. And that is how you would create a highlight. So you've not only got your highlight color, but you have an area here, which, what would, which would be in your object on your coloring page. You have an area here that is really going to stand out with a highlight if you leave a little bit of white and use very light pressure with this cream color. Like this cream color is just absolutely amazing. So I turn the paper and I'm kind of just coming back the other direction and adding some more of this. And then I'm going to come back with this sap green light and I'm going to go in a, not the sap green light, the pale sage, and go in a circular motion down into my cream. And I'm glad I made bigger boxes here because now I can kind of show you two different techniques and two different effects on both sides of the box, which is really cool. So if you add more layers of this cream color, now just look at this. Look at the difference in the color. Like here I've got much harder pressure and then I've got like medium pressure, like in this area and this area. And then here I just did it very lightly and I just barely touched the paper and left some white. And I'm just bringing this down into here to show you what you can do with this cream color. Now if I come all the way down with this cream color and I go over these other colors, look what it does, look how pretty that is. Now do you see how I just kind of blended all those colors together? And I'm using light pressure, but look, you could see all of the colors because I still had left a lot of the white of the paper. Now if I come back here and I just kind of fill this in here just to kind of create that line for depth. I could do that as well and then just come up here at a little bit more depth and look how I could still see all of that cream in here. If I wanted to, I could come back and add a little bit more of the Pale Sage and blend all this out a little bit more and I'm using very light pressure. But look how cool that is because I could still see all of that cream in there. I could see all three colors in this color blend. I left a little bit of the white of the paper, but I've got all three colors there. I brought my highlight color all the way down to the bottom. Now if I wanted to, I could always come back and I can blend all of these colors out, burnish them out, and again it would create a completely different color than what you see up here where I just did like a standard blend. But isn't that so cool? Okay, so let's go on to our last one. And I love this one for leaves. We've got a lot of green combinations here. Like this one could be used for leaves too. This one can be used for leaves as well. And then I've got another one. If you guys try any of these comb combinations on leaves, you must come into my Facebook group and show me what you have created so that I can see. Okay, so I've got moss green and then I have chartreuse, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. And then I have my favorite, favorite highlight color cream again. So we are going to put these colors together and let's see if we can do a couple different techniques here. But let's go ahead and lay this one down first. This color is so pretty. When you're looking for like an olivey type green to add in with all of the different beautiful olive greens that come in the 150 set, this is such a good color, but it's like you could mix it with so many other things. Now watch what happens once I lay this chartreuse down. Look at that. Look when these two colors blend together. Look at the color, how it changed that. Is that so, so cool? 
because you would never really look at these two colors and think, oh yeah, I want to make a color combination out of those because they look so different. But when you put these two colors together, it's like pow in your face. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Now look what happens when I come back and I add my cream to that. Look how pretty. And again, as always with my cream, I like to go much lighter and kind of leave a little bit of white space. But this would be an absolute gorgeous color combination for a leaf. And let me tell you, when I tell you that leaf would pop right off the page, that leaf would pop right off the page. <laughs> now let's go ahead and come back here and go sideways and cover up a little bit more of the white of that paper on this side to really show the true value of this color with harder pressure. And a couple more layers and then as I come down again I'm going to kind of lighten that up and make a really good blend line here because this color is this color can get very dark but we want it to look blended into that chartreuse look how pretty as it blends together and I'm just kind of if you can see I'm just kind of very lightly going down because I'm trying to pull this moss green into the chartreuse and then I'm going to lay a little bit more of the chartreuse down and pull them together a little bit more. Now I'm going in a circular motion and kind of bringing them all together. And of course, as I get down here even closer, I'm going to lighten up on the pressure of my hand. But if you look over here on the side, look at the gorgeous color that these two together create. So right here where I've got the colors kind of intermixing, these two colors together just create the most beautiful color. And then I'm going to come back and go over them again and use a little bit harder pressure with the cream. Look how beautiful that is. So what I want to do down here is I want to show you, I really want to kind of experiment with these two colors and I'm going to use this part down here to really blend together the moss green and the chartreuse and see what the actual color is that it creates. So I'm going to take the chartreuse and I'm going to go sideways over this moss green and this is kind of like the same idea I did over here where I brought the cream all the way down because I've still got some of the white of the paper left and I'm going in a circular motion and so I'm just adding more of the chartreuse in here. Look how pretty. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go over it again. And I'm going to bring this color up even more and I'm using very, very light pressure. I'm barely touching the paper and it's still putting pigment on the paper. But look how pretty that is. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do it one more time. And add a little bit more of the chartreuse. And I'm barely touching the paper again with this one. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadows in here. You see the difference that makes when you just do that one little step, how it just kind of makes it look as though it is just, or it just has so much more dimension. So now another trick you can do is you can just come back with your cream. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in a circular motion and I'm just going to go over all of these colors together. And look what that does. The brightness from that chartreuse, the highlight from the cream. 
and then the darkness from that moss green and that mossy color it is just so super cool and this would create the most different leaf on any of your coloring pages especially it would be especially beautiful on like a Joanna Basford page but look how pretty that is it's so different so so different but I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I think we did a lot more than just coming up with some color combinations. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my tips and tricks and how to improve your uh, coloring series because, I don't know, I think we learned a whole lot with this video. We didn't just learn what my favorite highlight colors were and we didn't just learn um, some new Prismacolor combinations, but there were a lot of lessons to be learned within just this one uh, color combination tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in this series. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it. We used lots of our fabulous colors and made some really beautiful combinations. So if y'all enjoyed this video, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. And I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.